All right, welcome to the end of Psalm chapter 16 as we spend some time today looking at the last uh, three verses, verse 9, 10, and 11. I want to read those to you and then uh, point our direction to see what David does in this conclusion. Um, this is pretty remarkable here. Listen to this. At the end of this prayer, and when he walks through some of the stuff we've done earlier this week, he says, Therefore, my heart is glad. My spirit rejoices. My body also rests securely. For you will not abandon me to Sheol. You will not allow the faithful one to see the pit. You, re you reveal the path of life to me. In your presence is abundant joy. And at your right hand are eternal pleasures. In many ways, this is exactly what people are looking for in the world today. Like They are looking for to be able to make a claim just like David made right here, that there is eternal pleasure, that there is abundant joy, that life is the path of life that has been revealed is one that leads to this rejoicing and gladness of heart. Like that is, that's the commercial. That's what people are trying to sign up for and find in all sorts of different ways. Um, I was recently down in Nashville um, at an event for Lake Light, and we were we were there. One of the um, one of the members of Christ Church was there as well, and he was meeting with a friend. So they happened to invite me to dinner that night, and we went to this. Um, I mean, this this fabulous restaurant. It was it was one of the best meals I've had in a really long time. And on my drive home, I was thinking to myself, like, it in terms of a meal, in terms of food and drink, right? It doesn't get much better than what we just had. I mean, it was it was just this remarkable meal. And then I woke up the next morning and what was crazy is I was hungry again. I mean, I I thought, I mean, this meal was so good. Why in the world would I have to fill myself up again the very next morning? It's just been a couple hours and I needed to go grab some yogurt out of the hotel uh, when we were there. Um, and it was it was a good reminder to me of even this these greatest experience, these greatest moments, they quickly fade away and that we have to like refill. We have to fill ourselves back up. And David is claiming something that is counter to that. He's claiming that there is this fulfillment that doesn't have to. Uh, it can be this once for all uh, fulfillment. And and um, when, when David writes this, this very passage, the end of Psalm chapter 16, is something that the apostle Peter must have been thinking about. Uh, because in Acts chapter 2, this is when the Holy Spirit comes in the church and they the people really want to know, like their hearts are convicted, what do they do? These Right after Jesus has been raised from the dead, the apostles have been out praying, waiting on the Spirit, the Spirit of God comes, and Peter has to give this sermon. And one of the things he does is he turns, I don't know if he had his Bible with him, but he either has it memorized or he runs to Psalm chapter 16, what we're looking at this morning. And this is the portion that he reads. And he says, I saw the Lord ever before me because he's at my right hand. That was yesterday's uh, devotional thought. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad. My tongue will rejoice. My flesh will rest in hope because you will not leave me in Hades or allow your Holy One to see decay. You have revealed the path of life to me. You will fill me with gladness in your presence. He's quoting Psalm chapter 16. And then he says this. He says, brothers, guess what? I'm confident of this that the patriarch David, the one who wrote this psalm, he is both dead and he is buried. His tomb is right over there, right? If we were in Washington, D.C., we'd say, hey, go look. Uh, find Lincoln's tomb. You can go. You can see it. It's right over there. Let's go look at it. Um, but he was a prophet, a man sworn of oath. And what he says is he says that he has not left, he, he was not left in Hades. His flesh did not experience decay. So who is he talking about? It's not David because David's right over there. So who is it that is not going to experience decay? Who is it that is, is going to have this eternal, this resurrected life? And he's saying, it is the one we just witnessed about. This Jesus who just came out after the resurrection that we saw. You are witnesses. You saw this. The Bible is bearing witness to the fact that the Spirit of God has raised Jesus from the dead. And that that promise of life is extended to us, that we actually receive uh, this life that Jesus earned. So that we can say, we sit at the right hand with the Father all the promises that Jesus has um, has received, the inheritance, the beautiful inheritance he has is now ours through faith. The sin that we carry is no longer our own and we can walk today in the fullness of life and rejoicing. Why? Because we have this eternal goodness, this once for all fulfillment uh, that takes our shame, that takes our guilt, that makes us right with God again and allows us to sit at his right hand. So let me remind you as you go today, uh, think throughout your day. You can go back and read the entire psalm, but also just be reminded that this promise that David is thinking about here is fulfilled in Jesus, that he is the Messiah, and he has made all of his enemies sit underneath his footstool. So uh, today, let me pray for you as you uh, head off into your day. Lord, we thank you for Psalm chapter 16, for the various dimensions of moving from, from a, needing a place of refuge, from insecurity to security, 
uh, to this place of bountiful joy and blessing. And we pray that we would be reminded in any circumstance that we have that our hearts can be moved in that direction because of what you've done for us in the Messiah Jesus, whose body did not see decay, who is not in the ground, but has overcome death and offers that life and hope to us where we are today. In Jesus' name, amen.